All right, well, my name is Sean Bootsy, and today I'm going to be talking to you about improving usability in the WordPress admin. So before we get started, uh, just some quick background on myself. I am a WordPress developer by trade. I work for GrowSpark. We are a web design and development agency based just across the river in Cambridge, Mass. So that is my full-time job. And outside of work, uh, developing on the web and for WordPress is also my hobby. So I do quite a bit of that outside of work as well. I recently authored a plugin called WP Image Size Limit, which is available on the WordPress.org plugin repository. In general, I've been developing on the web for about 13 years, and I've been working with WordPress exclusively for about four years. I also have a personal blog and a Twitter account where you can find out more about me. So as we start this presentation and think about the topic of usability in the WordPress, you know, the admin side of WordPress, I think it's it's fair to ask, you know, why am I even here today talking to you about improving the usability of WordPress? We might very well ask ourselves, isn't WordPress usable enough already, right? And I thought that was the whole point of why we use WordPress, because it is so usable. Uh, and for sure, it, it, it is very user-friendly, and a lot more so than a lot of the other alternatives out there. But I'm essentially going to argue today that it's not usable enough, and it can be a lot better. So in order to give you some context, I need to tell you a little bit about my day-to-day -day life at GrowSpark. I actually, in addition to building Word, WordPress sites, websites uh, with WordPress, I, actually, I, I also have a second job, and that is that I manage and provide technical support for all of our clients. And we have a client base now that is roughly made up of about 150 companies. So you can imagine that's, that's a lot of uh, support requests coming in every day. Uh, so by show of hands, how many of you have ever had a client email you saying, I don't know how to do something in my WordPress dashboard, or I don't know how to add something, right? Everyone. Uh, and even better yet, how many of you have had a client actually change something and email or call you saying, oh my god, I think something's broken, I tried to change something, right? Okay, just about everybody. Um, so, with a, when you're an agency and you have so many clients, you can imagine how this really uh, can be sort of a snowball effect and you can get you know, quite a bit of support requests coming in every day. So I am the lucky individual at our company who gets to take these calls and uh, answer these emails when people uh, are having trouble using WordPress. So by the end of the workday, I look more or less like this. <laughs> so it's, it's not always a glamorous job or a fun job, to be sure. Uh, but what it has provided me with, what I've gained from providing support to WordPress clients, is a tremendous amount of insight into how regular, ordinary, non-technical people interact with WordPress uh, as a tool. And this has led me to a bit of a realization. And that realization is that ordinary people are intimidated by WordPress. Obviously, this is a bit of a generalization, but I find that you know, a lot of our clients, when they're first learning WordPress, are overwhelmed and often intimidated by using it, and they're sometimes even afraid to change things because they don't know if it's going to break or I don't know how to do this. And there's a number of reasons why someone might have difficulty using WordPress. Some people simply just aren't as technically proficient as others. Some people are just more tech savvy than others. So some clients will just pick it up right away and not have a problem. But for other people, it takes a long time. And unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do about that to change you know, them and who they are and what their skills are. But when I really think about the way in which my clients sometimes have trouble using WordPress, and I really think about what is the, the root cause of what's going on here, the majority of the time, it's because we as developers haven't done enough to adapt WordPress to our clients' needs. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Here and now in 2012, we have sort of these two conflicting realities. The first is that the majority of sites we now build with WordPress are actually not blogs. So as an agency that can build WordPress sites, we're now seeing more and more clients come to us looking to use WordPress for something other than a blog. And I'd say no more than 50% of our clients even use a blog on their website at all. Yet at the same time, we have WordPress, which out of the box actually is very much still a blogging platform. If we look at the main screen of the admin side of WordPress, this is a screenshot of more or less a default 
WordPress installation, if you set up WordPress on your server and log in, obviously this is what you're going to see. And when we look at this, what we can see is an interface that has been deliberately engineered to be useful for a blogger running a blog website. We have all these dashboard widgets that are very much useful if you're running a blog, right? We have a quick press feature that only creates blog posts. We have a recent comments widget over here, which if you're not running a blog, you're probably not using comments, but if you're running a blog, then that's a great thing to have. Same thing with recent drafts that only displays recent drafts for posts, not for pages or any other content type. And then in the, the main navigation menu, when we look at what's over there, posts is given the highest priority. It's right at the top. And pages is kind of you know buried down in the list. So I, I think it's safe to say that right out of the box, that the default WordPress setup is still very much you know, a blogging platform. So the solution, I think, then, is pretty obvious. It's that we, the developers and the designers, the people building these WordPress sites, must do a better job of making WordPress fit our clients' needs and not vice versa. We should not be taking our clients' needs for their website management and feeling like we have to fit it into this sort of confined box that is the WordPress default. The great news is that WordPress now makes this extremely possible. Even just a few years ago when you were building a WordPress site, you were a lot more confined to the sort of default setup that they provide you with. But now we have so much more opportunity to customize and personalize and really transform WordPress for our clients into something that is built specifically for them. The catch, though, is that we need to do the work. This is not something WordPress is just going to do for us. We, the developers, need to put the work in up front to make this transformation. So how can we do this? Well, today I just, I'm going to go through just a few examples of what I feel are some of the most powerful ways that you can begin customizing the admin side of WordPress for your clients. And the first thing I want to look at is the admin menu itself. So this is the main navigation menu on the admin side of WordPress, and it's essentially how a user is going to access any of the features that the platform has to offer. And this is an example here of all of the default features that come with WordPress. If you're logged in as an administrator, this is more or less the menu you're going to see. And this is just the start. If, you have, if you're working with a framework that adds more tabs or you have a lot of plugins, this can quickly become even more extensive. So I, I have a problem with this menu right off the bat, which is that there's a lot of stuff on here. And it might not always seem like that to us, but we have to remember that we're working with WordPress all the time. We see this menu every single day, so we know what each and every one of these things means. But believe me, for someone who has never used WordPress before, they come in here, they don't know what the heck's going on. And it can be frustrating and overwhelming for people to have so many options and have to sort of wade through a lot of things that may not be relevant to them uh, immediately. So the first thing I want to do is, when I set up a WordPress site for a client, I want to think about how can I cut down on the amount of features available to them, at least while they're first getting set up on WordPress. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to just take advantage of WordPress's user roles. So in WordPress, you have a variety of user roles that you can assign to any user account. The highest being admin, obviously, which has access to everything. Editor is a step below admin, and then you have a variety of uh, roles below editor, each with varying, varying levels of access to features. So one thing that I like to do a lot of the time is just set my client's account up as an editor when they're first learning WordPress. I'll, I'll first set their account up as an editor, and I'll maintain a separate login that has admin access so that I can still access all of the features in WordPress. And what this is going to do is it's going to very easily allow us to cut down dramatically on the amount of features that the client's going to see when they're first learning WordPress. So going just from the admin role to the editor role will cut down on the amount of features that our client's going to see by about half. We've gone from a very extensive default menu, which could be even more cluttered and confusing depending on, again, what plugins and frameworks you're using. It could be easily twice that size. And now what we have is something that contains only six tabs. And better yet, it contains mostly the stuff that I believe a user 
is going to need to access when they're first learning how to use WordPress. So when my client is learning how to use WordPress for the first time and I'm training them, I think what they really need to be focusing on is figuring out how to manage their content. So if we're working with a relatively default WordPress site, that's going to be the post and pages section. Right? We're not going to bother them yet with plugins and settings and all this stuff or whatever other custom options panels we have and things like that. Now down the line, they could very well need to access those features and that's fine. But the key takeaway to what we're doing here is we are gradually introducing the client to WordPress and I think that can be a very powerful thing uh, in, in ensuring that your clients have a positive experience learning WordPress because if they see a whole, bu a whole bunch of stuff going on, they can easily get frustrated and overwhelmed and just think, okay, they'll just throw up their hand and be like, this is just way too hard. I need someone to do this for me or I'm just not going to do it. But if you make it easier for them, they're going to have much more incentive to actually want to learn how to do things. So what we have here, again, now is the you know, menu they would get if I set up my user as an editor. But this is all, not always going to be a perfect solution. Again, once they get set up, they're going to want to do more things. A lot of my clients like to edit things on their sidebar, move widgets around, create their own widgets, even edit their navigation menus and move those around. So the problem is if we have them set up as an editor right now, they can't do anything else except edit content. So that's not going to be an ideal solution all the time. So what you can do is you really have a, a few options. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just bump them up to admin at that point. Say, okay, you've learned enough, you're comfortable, we're just going to you know, upgrade you to admin and then they'll be able to do all that stuff. But the other thing you can do is you can actually customize your user roles to grant access to only specific features that you think your client is going to want. And WordPress makes this uh, pretty easy to do. You can do it both within your own code if you're a developer and you can use plugins to accomplish this. So if you are a developer and you like to write your own code, and work, I'd recommend you check out our Growth Spark starter theme if you've never done this kind of thing before. Uh, it's available on GitHub. I will post this URL again, so don't, don't worry about it. writing it down. Uh, but we have a, a nice file in there in the includes directory called user capabilities where we have some pretty, pretty good examples of how to, how to do this uh, with, with the code. And if you're not the developer, if you like to use plugins, you're not really comfortable writing PHP, I'd highly recommend uh, you check out one of these two plugins, Admin Menu Editor and Role Scoper. These are great plugins that allow you to essentially accomplish the same thing. So we're going to assume that I'm just going to take the DIY approach and customize my user's uh, editor role in, in my own code. And what I would do is I would use a WordPress function called AdCap, and this uh, sample code right here is really just a smaller snippet of a larger function you would have to set up. But essentially what you're doing is you're specifying the first parameter, the role you want to you want to edit. So I'm saying, okay, I want to edit my editor role. And then the second parameter, you're going to enter in a slug that corresponds to whatever capability that you want to grant uh, to the editor beyond what they already have access to. And what you have to do is look that value up in the codex, which is a section called roles and capabilities, and you would just find or you would do a find for you know, whatever ability you want to grant the user role, and then you would enter that slug in into the function. So in this case, to grant my client access to edit their widgets and uh, navigation menus, they need access to the appearance tab, which they don't have by default. So it just so happens to be that the slug edit theme option is <coughs> what accomplishes that. So I would set this up in a function, maybe drop it in my functions.php file, and that would really be all I need to do. And then if we go back, what I now have is the same menu as I had before, but now my client does have access to the appearance tab. So for me, and a lot of my clients, I find that this is a pretty ideal setup. For them, it gives them just enough control over the content and appearance of their site that they need without having to uh, see a lot of other features that they might not necessarily need to use. Uh, but again, I don't think this is something that you, should, you shouldn't have to, this isn't a hard, uh, hard and fast rule. Okay, you're going to want to address this on a case-by-case -case basis. Each project and each site that you build, you really should think about what does my client need to do and figure out how you want to set up the features available to them based on that because every client's different and all their needs are different as well. But we still haven't really addressed the question of what if we're not building a blog-oriented website. 
pretend I have a hypothetical client right now, we we'll call them Acme Industries or whatever, and they've come to me to build their site for them. And they've told me that, listen, we're not going to use a blog on this site. We want to use WordPress for the interface. But it's really just going to be a basic business site, marketing website. So it's going to have a lot of informational content, but we're not going to use a blog. What they are going to be posting, and they've told me this ahead of time, is they're going to be posting press releases and events on a regular basis. So I have a problem here, which is that my setup, even though you know, I've simplified it for them, the content types available to them are not particularly relevant. And again, it's a setup that's optimized specifically for a blog. Now, if you were developing a WordPress site even a couple of years ago, you would probably have to kind of work with what you had. And you'd say, OK, you want to add press releases and events. Well, maybe we'll set that up under posts and differentiate them via categories or something like that. That's really not a great solution. And the great news is that we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> And the reason we don't have to do that anymore is we have things, this thing called custom post types, which are really great. Uh, show of hands, how many people already know about custom post types and use them? Great, everyone does. So you're already familiar with the concept, which is great. If is there any of you out there who don't know about them or aren't using them yet, your homework is to look this stuff up because custom post types are the key to transforming WordPress and personalizing it to be pretty much you know, close to a real content management system. For your clients. So these were introduced in WordPress 3.0, and what they're going to do is they're going to allow us to essentially create any number of content types that we want beyond just what we get by default in WordPress. So this is going to be really powerful because it's going to allow me to break out of the box that is the WordPress default and go from a set of features that looks like this, which is you know really a setup for a blog, and now I can create something like this. So they told me they're going to be managing press releases and events, so I've created custom post types for each of those. They also told me that they want to be able to manage team member profiles and slides for our homepage uh, slideshow. So I set up custom post types for those as well. And this is really powerful from both a technical as well as a conceptual level, because we look over here on the left with the default setup. If I'm a client and I see this, what I see is WordPress, or I see you know, a, a cookie cutter blogging solution that has been handed to me. But if I see a menu that looks more like what's over on the right, I see my website. I see a content management system that has been deliberately built with my needs in mind, with all the features that I need and nothing else. So again, you want to create custom post types whenever possible for any type of content that your client is going to want to manage on their website. And there's, again, two ways to do it. You can do it fairly easily in PHP. So if you're a developer, you should definitely do it yourself in PHP. Uh, we do have an example file if you've never done it before in PHP. We have a nice uh, file called CPT sample, which you can easily just copy, change a few values based on what you need, and boom, you've got a new CPT. Sorry. CPT stands for Custom Post Type at Gross Park. That's the abbreviation we use. So that's why it's called CPT Sample. We also have a really nice collection of images that are icons that you can use for each tab. So by default, when you set up a Custom Post Type, it's just going to use the same thumbtack image. And if you have a bunch, you know, it doesn't really look that nice. It doesn't look that great. Uh, so I highly encourage you to also be using custom icon images as well, which just further personalizes the user experience for your client. If you're not a coder, there's a great plugin called Custom Post Type UI. Uh, and I highly recommend it, and it will allow you to create any number of custom post types pretty much in a matter of minutes uh, with a really intuitive user interface. So definitely check that out. So I'm just going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into one of my new custom post types specifically. I'm going to look at the press releases custom post type that I'm setting up for my client. And if we tab in to the press releases tab in WordPress, what we're going to get is, again, pretty much identical to what you would get in the, the post editor. This screen looks exactly the same. So I don't like this because, again, what we have here is an interface that is designed to be useful for managing blog content. We have a lot of extra meta boxes on this screen, categories, featured image, excerpts, what have you that are really useful sometimes for managing blogs and even other custom post types, you might take advantage of features like that. But I know that my client has told me that, listen, we just want to upload a PDF 
for our press release, set a title, set a date, and that's it. So I know that none of this stuff is going to get used, but none of this extra stuff is relevant to them. So what I'd really like to do is get rid of it, because again, the more irrelevant, not useful stuff we have in our interfaces, the more chance that our clients are going to be confused and be thinking that they should be doing things that they don't really need to be doing at all. So I'd really like to get rid of this stuff. And the great news is that it's really easy to do this. Uh, if I'm setting up my custom post type in PHP, what I would do is just go into my register post type function, and there is a parameter called supports, which manages all of the default data boxes. And that parameter is mapped to an array, and what we see there is just a list of all of the default data boxes that we saw on the previous screen. And getting rid of them is as simple as just removing them from the array. So I'm just going to go down this list and see and say, OK, does my client need these things? In most cases, it's no. So I'm just going to delete them all. So I would delete them from save the file, and that's it. And I believe in custom post type UI, they have a pretty easy interface for doing this exact same thing. So if I go back into my editor, now what I have is something much cleaner. I've gotten rid of all the irrelevant features in here. I'm still not really satisfied, though. Because now, what I want to think about is, OK, I've got this editor set up for press releases, but how is my client really going to use this? Three, four, five, six months from now, when I'm not by their side training them, how is my client actually going to add a press release using this interface? Well, the first thing they would probably have to do is find this ridiculously microscopic upload insert button, which is you need like a magnifying glass to find it. So provided they can even you know, remember that it's there, you know, that they find it and click on it, then they can upload their PDF file. They might have to look at a bunch of irrelevant options in the media uploader that probably aren't uh, specific to their needs either. But at that point, then they could probably do a couple things. You could probably insert it directly into the post editor, or maybe they would have to copy the hyperlink, the full, the full URL of the file, and then either paste that into the editor or type click to download PDF, highlight that, add the hyperlink, which for us, not that hard to do. Uh, but if you've built WordPress sites for even a few clients and had to support them, you should be getting nervous just thinking about that when you're building, but you're not around. Because more often than not, something's going to go wrong at some point. Uh, and they will get frustrated. Something will, will break. Uh, and then that's going to be bad for you as well because your client's not going to be happy. They're going to be calling you, emailing you. Oh my god, I can't remember how to do this, or it's broken, it's not working. So I've, I've really decided that this is not going to be an optimal way for my client to add their press releases. Like it or not, they've insisted they're going to use PDFs for the press release. So this isn't really going to be the best solution for them. So essentially what I'm going to do is remove it. I'm going to get rid of the WYSIWYG editor, which you would do using the exact same procedure as how we removed the other default data boxes. But now I don't have anything. Now I just have a title field, which doesn't really do much. What I'd really like to have for my client is just a box that says PDF file or upload PDF with a nice button that says add file. So there's no question about what it does so that they can just upload their file and be done with it. So I can actually do this, and what I need to do is take advantage of custom meta boxes. So in the previous example, we saw how we can remove some of the default meta boxes that WordPress, you know, that come with WordPress, but we can also create our own. And what's great about these is we can then, in creating a custom meta box in the post editor, we can then enter any number of data entry fields that we want, any type of data entry field, whether it's a simple text field a file uploader, a date picker, whatever you want, you can put in a, in a custom data box. Again, two ways you can do this. You can do it with PHP if you're a developer. And if you want to take that route, I recommend checking out some tutorials. Uh, I found one on uh, WP2 Plus, which seemed pretty good. So you can check that out. Uh, but this is one feature where I personally prefer to use a plugin. I, I'm, a, I'm a developer, and I like to usually write my own code. But this plugin is amazing. Does anyone already use this plugin, Advanced Custom Fields? Yeah, we have a team. It's great, right? It's awesome. Uh, so we um, have to get the, the additional three plugins that, that are part deactivating the, for the, the uh, item row repeater. But they're relatively inexpensive, and it's just a one right. plugin. Right, right. So there are the, the, you can get most of the plugin for free on WordPress.org. You can create custom data boxes 
with advanced custom fields. Uh, as this gentleman said, there are some premium add-ons you can get for it as well, which will allow you to also create, I think a, you can do a theme options panel, which is nice, and there's a couple other things. They're pretty, they're still pretty cheap, they're not very expensive, but for just creating simple custom data boxes, you don't need to pay anything, just go to wordpress.org uh, and get it. So I can't recommend this plugin enough, I'd say it's the best plugin I've ever used, it's amazing. So in my example, I'm gonna use the advanced custom fields plugin and go into their UI, which is great and it's really easy to use. And I have, all I have to do is create a label for the field, so I'm just gonna call it PDF file, and then I'm gonna use this nice drop down to just pick the field type I want. So they have quite a few different field types that you can choose from. I'm gonna select the file field type, which is a nice file uploader. So I'm gonna select that, and then I'm just gonna save my settings. Uh, in a previous screen, you would have to select which post type you want it to appear on, so I would select, okay, I wanna add this to my press releases post type. And while I'm in here, I'm also gonna add one other field, which is the date picker field, which is also on this, this drop down. So I'd repeat the process again, name it press release date or something like that, and select the date picker. And I'm gonna do that because this plugin has a great date picker field. It's jQuery based, it's a calendar style where you just point and click, and it's much more user friendly than just the regular published thing in WordPress, which isn't always visible, and it's not really great. So I'm gonna add a dedicated field just for the press release date as well through this plugin. Now I'm gonna jump back into the actual editor. And what I have here now is my new custom data box called Press Release Options with my two new fields, PDF file, clearly labeled, it's just for the PDF file so they know exactly what it does, and it has a button that actually looks like a button that says add file, not upload insert. And I also have my press release date picker. And this is what the date picker looks like, it's really nice. And so you can see how great of a transformation we made here in the user experience of managing this content type. We went from an interface that was very busy and cluttered and really just had a lot of stuff that wasn't relevant at all to my client's needs. And now what I have is a UI that has only exactly what my client needs to do and nothing else. And beyond that, for the things that they do need to do, I have made it super easy for them to do it. I've pretty much eliminated all possibility that my client's gonna mess this up. It's so obvious and so easy. All they have to do is click add file, upload their PDF, and they're done. No extra steps, no nothing, and then to the date, they can literally look at a calendar, point to it, and then it automatically populates the field. So there's virtually no way that my, that my client is now gonna have trouble with this. And that's great news for me, because that's one less phone call or email I have to get from a frustrated client. And I can keep doing what I like to do, which is actually develop sites. So to recap what we've gone over today, uh, when we're planning a new WordPress site, building a WordPress site, I hope I've convinced you that it is really important to pay attention to the admin side almost as much as you pay attention to the front end. And as we're doing this and planning the user experience of the admin side of our client's WordPress site, we should keep some goals in mind. We want to be making sure we're gradually introducing clients into the WordPress experience by limiting access to the more advanced and non-essential features that are in there. So for each project that you do for a client, really think about, okay, what is, what's the most important stuff that my client needs to be able to do with WordPress? And then are there some stuff, are there some things that they will need to do, but maybe not right away. So I'm, I'm gonna train them, I'm gonna set them up with only with the real essential features, and then maybe later on I can either bump them up to administrator or use you know, custom user capabilities to grant them access to specific features. We should be ruthless in eliminating features that are not needed and not relevant to our client's needs, because again, this just adds clutter to the WordPress panels and it contributes to clients being confused and overwhelmed and which can sometimes lead to them just not using the system because it's so confusing that they can't find things, what have you. We should always use custom post types whenever possible for any type of content that our clients need to manage so that we're tailoring the experience for them to be a truly custom content management system that's built for them so that again, when they experience WordPress and see the back end of their WordPress site, they see their website, they don't see WordPress. And we should always be implementing custom data boxes whenever needed for our content types. That way, the content creation process and the data entry process is as error-free 
as possible, which is great for us and our clients, and it's just you know, more enjoyable for them because they don't feel confused or feel afraid to make changes because they know that it's going to be straightforward. So I've gone over basically three examples today, but in reality, there are so many more ways that you can personalize and customize the admin side of WordPress for your client. And this is just a quick list of some of the things that you can also do. Unfortunately, I don't have time to really dive into them, but just a few examples. Uh, you should definitely create custom options panels for your themes to give your clients more granular control over the front-end display of the website and behavior of the website. Uh, you should definitely think about customizing the tiny MCD toolbar, which is the WYSIWYG editor, the text editor, in the, the post editing panel. And essentially there, you, you, know, you have a lot of buttons on that editor, and you can actually remove a lot of those if you don't think they're going to be used, and you can add your own, which is great. You should definitely think about removing a lot of the default dashboard and sidebar widgets that WordPress includes by default, because again, those are really optimized for a blog, and if you're not building a blog website, you really don't want to think about, is this even useful for my client at all? And if not, just get rid of them. And you should also think about creating your own custom widgets. You can do this both for the dashboard as well as the actual sidebar widgets uh, area. You can use your own widgets and uh, create them and add them to your theme so that you can you know, have widgets that actually are relevant to your client's needs. And finally, you should definitely think about branding the login screen and the dashboard of your WordPress site with your client's logo, rather than just keeping sort of the standard WordPress name. Because again, the idea here is really personalizing the experience so that they feel like this is their website that they're using, not WordPress. So we do have a lot of code examples within, within our own starter theme on GitHub. So if you're interested in doing these kind of things with PHP, you want to learn how to do it yourself, I highly recommend uh, you do so. And you can find some great code examples in our starter theme, uh, it's usually, they're all in the includes folder, so you want to look there, and they're very clearly labeled, so you'll know what each one does. Uh, there's also plenty of other great tutorials and code examples out there, you know, ours isn't the only resource, so even, you know, a simple Google search, you'd be amazed what you can find out there. Uh, and for the non-developers in the room, I'd highly recommend you check out either of these two plugins, Add Minimize and White Label CMS. These are com comprehensive, all-in-one type solutions, so they'll allow you to really accomplish a lot of these tasks that we've gone over today, sort of all in one plugin, so you don't have to get a gazillion plugins to do all this stuff. Uh, so these are, these are pretty good, so I'd recommend uh, checking those out as well. Uh, that's all I got today. Thanks very much, guys. I'll take, uh, take any questions. So in my example, I got rid of the editor, but you could very, you could just as easily keep the editor in there and have the upload feature there, so you could add some actual content. And that's a, that's a great point because obviously using PDFs is not ideal for the web because you're not the search engines can't read it. Um, so yeah, that, that would actually be a great option for that particular use case. And then for, you know, I have a client that does a bunch of events, so I can go yeah. in there and have the field like upload PDF. I could have had things like dates, location. Absolutely. And yep. Things yep. For every yeah, and especially yeah, if you're using advanced custom fields, you can just create as many as you want. Like Any field you need. Uniform, yep. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Any questions? I have a question about the compatibility issues for the future release to work back. Because mm -hmm. um, I found like we tried to build uh, on top of work back like user friendly admin panel. Yeah. Made some changes before, and then when it went poorly, it also made the third version. You yeah. know, the whole program. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I have a you know an absolute answer to that, but obviously, so it sounds like you had a site where you were instead of using custom post types, you're using either pages or posts that use multiple. Yeah, so again, I think that's a situation where unfortunately, maybe when you developed the site, you didn't have. Uh, the advantage of some of the newer features now, but I think we always need to make sure that we're doing things the WordPress way and the way they want us to do it. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I can't say that if you went back in time, you could have done it differently. <laughs> and that, and for that particular case, I don't think custom post types are going anywhere. 
or custom data box are going anywhere. I think they're here to stay, especially as we see WordPress really blossoming into a full-blown CMS. So I feel pretty comfortable using those features. But again, I mean, you can never tell what the future is going to bring. And I think you just need to stay on top of what's going on with WordPress. Uh, follow the WordPress.org blog and keep up on the beta releases. So you, you, know, you should definitely have a development server where you can test the beta version, your site on a beta version ahead of time. And what is your observation? When people, you refer to people uh, come to you uh, as clients and mm -hmm. not build a non-blogging uh, website based on WordPress. Why is that? Do they really know? Do they really need WordPress or do they just collect it because it's popular? It's a great question. I mean, some clients don't know what they want, and because we're WordPress experts, we just happen to feel that even for non-blogs that WordPress has come so far that it really is the best solution for them, and we'll recommend it that way, and you know, they'll just, if they choose to do business with us, they'll say, okay, great, and we'll you know, have to make these customizations for them. Uh, but uh, there's still a lot of clients that come asking specifically for WordPress, and it's usually just because there's, you know, it's so popular, and there's so much hype, and they hear about how easy it is to use, so that it's, a lot of times they'll have made up their minds ahead of time and just say, you know, we already have chosen them. We want to use WordPress. Maybe they know someone who has a company that runs their site on WordPress, so they're already pretty comfortable with the idea of it. Yeah. Back on the slide one, so yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. No problem. People. And do we charge for this customization to make it simpler? Uh, like line? Because it's not in line full, actually. You know, right. WordPress is not that, you know. Absolutely. Easy. Um, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good question. I mean, I can't say we, we have done that, really gone back to an old project and, and done that as a standalone service. Like, we're just going to upgrade just the, the admin panels. Uh, we, we might do it in the future. I'm not sure whether or not they would pay for it. It really depends on our relationship with the client and what the nature of the, you know, the business relationship is. So it really depends. Um, I have two questions. Um, the first one, I'm not sure if I missed out on um, the talk, but how did you reorder the menu items in the left? How do you reorder yeah. the menu so items? Like, have the pages on top? Yeah. And the so that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, in one of my examples, in the, oh, sorry. So the, the question was in one of my previous slides, I'll actually just tap back to it so we can get to it. Uh, one of the, the admin menus I had created, the pages tab was actually at the top rather than being down at the bottom. Is that right? No. No. Uh, it was in custom post type, sorry. Yeah, right there. And that was, you know, when I set up the new menu for the client. Uh, so I didn't have time to talk about doing that specifically, but you can also reorder the menu items uh, in the menu. So for a lot of clients, who run just business websites, pages is really usually, usually the primary feature they're using, so I like to push it up to the top. If that, you, you should just think about what is my client going to use the most and reorder your, your menu accordingly. Um, I don't have a code example in here. I think the admin menu editor plugin is called admin menu editor, allows you to rearrange it. And in our starter theme, on the one on GitHub, there's a file called admin menu.php, and I have some example code in there of how you can actually rearrange uh, the tabs on there. Um, my other question is that is, is there a way to quickly like, customize this menu across different sites? It looks like you know every time you create a new website, you yeah. have to go through and manually customize them. Is that a quick way to do that across the board? Sure. Great question. So the question was, is there a way to make this process quicker and more efficient rather than having to you know, manually make all these adjustments every time? So I, I referenced our growth bar starter theme. And that's where you know either using a, a framework or a starter theme can be really useful. Uh, so that starter theme that we have on GitHub, that is our starting point for every new development project. When I'm going to start building uh, a new WordPress site, I have this building block to start on. And a lot of this stuff is already set up by default. I don't have you know press releases, events, and stuff. I do, I think, uh, have a slides custom post type in there by default because almost all of our clients have a home page slider, right? That love page slider, so we usually have it in there by default. So if you're doing stuff over and over again, if you have a uh, certain custom post type you always use or you always want pages at the top, just set up you know, a starter theme that's just bare bones, not much on the front end, but in the back end you have some of these things already pre-configured. Uh, 